Good evening and welcome to the April 6, 2015 regular meeting of the Mayor and City Council. Our first agenda item this evening is the Pledge of Allegiance and I would like to invite a few people up to come lead us. Samir Sherzad, Jason Sherzad from Kenwood Elementary School as well as Boy Scout PAC 1760. Everyone come up to the podium and, and lead us and everyone else please <coughs> rise. Go ahead, you start. Stop. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> Next on our agenda is reflection, and I would like to ask for a moment of silence, please. Thank you very much. Next we have the approval of minutes. Uh, tonight we have one, two, three, four sets of minutes. The first being regular session held February 17th, 2015. What is the pleasure of the council? Move for approval of the minutes for February 17th, 2015. I'll second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain. Carries 4-0-1. Next we have the uh, Regular meeting held March 2nd, 2015. What is the pleasure of the council? Move approval of the minutes from the March 2nd meeting. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carries 5-0. Next, we have the work session minutes from March 23rd, 2015. What is the pleasure of the council? I move approval of the work session minutes from March 23rd. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carries 5-0. And last, we have the work session for March 30th, 2015. What's the pleasure of the council? I'll move approval of those minutes. Second. All, of, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carries 5-0. Thank you very much. We, now we have our consent agenda, and tonight we have one item. What is the pleasure of the council? Move approval of the consent agenda item. I'll second. Uh, before we vote, Mr. Mayor, I sure. just wanted to um, ask Mark Scafidi to come up and um, just make a, a brief explanation of the background material for this uh, agenda item because I, I just thought it would be useful for the public to understand the process for what happens when we have a series of bidders and amounts um, ranked from lowest cost to highest cost and what happens when we have to um, replace one of those bidders to make sure that the folks understand um, that we're not just sort of arbitrarily replacing somebody with a higher cost service provider. Yeah, so what happened in this situation is um, we did a closed, seals bid, closed sealed bid for the mowing contracts. Um, My Bloom Landscaping, they were the lowest bidder. Um, we thought that, you know, we checked the references, stuff like that. We thought they, were, they would perform well in the first um, three weeks of last year's mowing season. They had already fallen way behind. They hadn't um, mown all the, mowed all the properties yet. So um, what we did is we talked to council, um, to Lynn, about, um, about voiding you know, the contract with them and then going to the next bidder. So we contacted CNC Management Group. We gave them the opportunity. They were the next lowest bidder at $69,925. And they said they weren't interested in mowing it. They had already had enough contracts for the mowing season. They wouldn't be able to, to mow the properties. So we contacted the Brickman Group. They were the third lowest bidder. They said they would be able to take on the properties. It was still within, you know, our budget amount, so we could, um, you know, so we could afford to pay for it out of the operating budget. But. Um, if it was really high, if the third lowest bidder was around $120,000, we really would have had to look at scaling back the number of properties that we went out to, or you know something like that, something to reduce the cost to get back into our budget. But um, the Brickman Group was able to do it. They perform they performed very well last year. So we, what we're asking tonight is to enter into the second year of the three years of the contract. 
And one thing that Mark and I talked about before the meeting is, and he, he alluded to this a little bit, is if you had to go from the lowest bidder to the second lowest bidder or the third lowest bidder, and there was a really significant difference uh, in the bid amount, so much so that you know, if it doubled or tripled the price, at that point, they might t put it back out to mm -hmm. bid. Right. Um, so we wouldn't just automatically accept uh, a really high cost of a service if it wasn't rationally related to what our estimates were. That's right. When, when we found out that the performance was bad with the lowest bidder, we go out to bid in the fall, so it's all ready for the spring. So, um, you know, if, if we knew that in advance, so really we were stuck because it was, it was the beginning of the mowing season. Everybody had mowing contracts, so really that's, that's what we were left with. But we've been very happy with them. They've performed very well, and they're doing a good job of mowing the right-of-ways around the city. Great. Great. Thank you very Thank much. You You're very welcome. So we have a motion and a second. All those. In, do you have any I would questions? just comment that this information was all useful, but maybe it would have been appropriate to take it off the consent agenda. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. But that's all. Well, that said, yep. um, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Carries 5-0. Mm -hmm. Next, we have presentations. Um, and I will go up to the podium. Two presentations. That was really smooth that you had that in there. That's great. <laughs> okay. I'd like to invite Juliet Francisco to join me up here. Um, our first uh, presentation is uh, pro Proclaiming the Month uh, Arab American Heritage Month. So, the city of Gaithersburg recognizes Arab Americans throughout the month of April, providing an opportunity to learn about and appreciate the culture, history, and contributions of our Arab American neighbors. The Arab world is culturally rich and diverse, encompassing 22 countries, three monotheistic world religions, divergent political loyalties, as well as differences of locality, region, kinship, and social class. Arab Americans have been part of American society since the American Revolution and have played prominent roles in government, business and industry, education, culture, the arts, and public affairs. On April 20th, the Multi Multicultural Affairs Committee will be hosting a celebration from 5.45 p.m. <laughs> to 7.15 p.m. at the Activity Center at Bora Park. Gaithersburg students will, will be making presentations showcasing Arab American achievers in the areas of science, entertainment, politics, and sports. The evening will also include entertainment and light refreshments. The celebration is free and open to the public. Everyone is invited. We hope you will all be there. Um, we are honored to have Juliet Francisco, longtime volunteer for the Multicultural Affair Affairs uh, Committee's Arab American Heritage Month celebrations and festivals to accept this proclamation of the mayor and city council of Gaithersburg. Whereas since the 1880s, Arab Americans have constituted an ethnicity made up of several waves of immigrants from the Arabic speaking countries of Southwest, Southwestern Asia and North Africa. And whereas Arab American heritage reflects a culture with a strong commitment to family economics and educational achievements. And whereas <laughs> Arab Americans have contributed greatly to the success of our nation in the areas of commerce, business, politics, education, medicine, and the arts. And whereas Montgomery County is home to a thriving Arab American community whose valued presence has added to the rich cultural mosaic of our community. Now, therefore, I, Judd Ashman, by the power vested in me as mayor of Gaithersburg, do hereby proclaim April 2015 as Arab American Heritage Month in the city of Gaithersburg, supporting this year's theme, Arab American Achievers. Proclaim this sixth day of April uh, 2015 and signed by me. Congratulations. Well, good evening. I'm honored this evening to be accepting this proclamation on behalf of the Arab American community in Gatorsburg, which has been a home for, for my family and I for the last 23 years. It's the best city in the world. <laughs> well <done. Yeah. laughs> This evening, I would like to thank Mayor Ashman and City Council members, 
and the city staff for, rec for recognizing April as Arab Heritage Month. This means a lot uh, to us, especially for the Arab American students. Even though they are Americans, they, are still have, they still have the opportunity to celebrate their culture and heritage. Thank you again, and we appreciate your support. Thank you. Oh, come on up. Let's do one more. Let's do one more photo. For the whole committee. Any committee members? Please. <laughs> Let's come over here in front of the council. <clears throat> we need some on this side too. <laughs> when Jen's the tallest, then. <laughs> three, one, two, three. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next presentation is Days of Remembrance, um, and I'd like to invite Jacob Blumenthal, the rabbi at Share Torah, and Connie Liss, Share Torah Executive Board President, to join me up here. The United States Congress established. Nice. The Days of Remembrance as the nation's annual commemoration of the Holocaust and created the United States Holocaust Memorial Mu Museum as a permanent living memorial to the victims. This year, Holocaust Remembrance Day, also known as Yom HaShoah, is Thursday, April 16, 2015. The city of Gaithersburg joins with the United States Congress and the, and the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum in observing the annual Days of Remembrance in our community. And I have a proclamation on behalf of the mayor and city council of Gaithersburg, whereas since the 1880, oh, this is the wrong one. This is the, this is the Arab American. <laughs> we were about to have a reprise there. <laughs> okay. Because how many proclamations can start with the 1880s, really, <laughs> in one night? Um, whereas the Holocaust was the state-sponsored systematic persecution and, and annihilation of European Jewry by Nazi Germany and its collaborators between 1933 and 1945, six million were murdered. And whereas the history of the Holocaust offers an opportunity to reflect on the moral responsibilities of individuals, societies, and governments, and whereas we, the people of the city of Gaithersburg, should actively rededicate ourselves to the principles of individual freedom in a just society, and whereas the days of remembrance have been set aside for people to remember the victims of the Holocaust, as well as to reflect on the need for respect of all peoples, and whereas pursuant to an act of Congress, the United States Holocaust Memorial Council designates the days of remembrance of the victims of the Holocaust to be Sunday, April 12th through Sunday, April 19th, 2015, including the day of remembrance known as Yom HaShoah, Thursday, April 16, 2015. Now, therefore, I, Judd Ashman, by the power vested in me as mayor of Gaithersburg, do hereby proclaim the week of Sunday, April 12th through Sunday, April 19, 2015, as days of remembrance in memory of the victims of the Holocaust and in honor of the survivors as well as the rescuers and liberators, and further proclaim that we, as citizens of the city of Gaithersburg, should work to promote human dignity and confront hate whenever and wherever it occurs. Proclaim this sixth day of April 2015 and signed by me. I'll give you that. Now, it's my understanding that uh, Connie, your your was your mother was a survivor. Both, or both of your parents, and uh, would you like to say a few words, a few words. please? Thank you. So, as a, a child of a survivor of uh, my mother was a survivor of one 
concentration camp, my father another. But as I grew up in their in their household, one was a speaker of the of of the, his history of her history, and the other not so much. And what I came to learn throughout my childhood into my adulthood is how important it is to remember and to learn from any and all experiences that we can. And so I thank the city and the council for using this as an opportunity to bring this to our attention, to learn from it, and to teach with it. And I'm going to take one more opportunity, one more minute, to tell you about an event that on Yom HaShoah, well, the, the evening of Yom HaShoah, an event to, that's a documentary of my mom's experience, a little bit of her experience at Auschwitz and of her life and teaching afterwards because she taught her experiences to children throughout New York State. So this is the event. I'm going to leave it here. If anybody's interested in attending, I'd be more than happy to see you there. And I thank you all very, very much. Thank you. Next, we have public comments. This is the time when the mayor and council will be glad to hear the anyone from the public speak on any topic they'd like that's not a public hearing topic. And since we don't have any public hearings this evening, whatever you would like to speak about would be just fine. Uh, we ask that you keep your remarks to no more than three minutes. Um, identify uh, yourself and, and your address. Um, and when you have 30 seconds left, the, the uh, timer will will beep and blink yellow, and when your time is done, it will beep repeatedly and blink red. Who would like to be the first speaker? Please, come on up, Aaron. My name is Aaron Rosenzweig. I live on One Thorburn Road. It's only real until someone proves it's legendary. My son, Akiva, said this to me. He took something from Japanese culture, stood it on its head, then created a new idea. It's only real until someone proves it's legendary. What some people think about chickens, especially roosters, is wrong. We have to show them the truth. He makes it sound so simple. What is remarkable is how he expressed a concept that lawyers grapple with every day. It's called magical thinking. As human beings, we rarely see our world for what it is. Instead, we see only what we believe, even if it has no basis in reality. A baby elephant can be tethered by a simple chain. When he matures, he is still restrained by that weak chain. As an adult, he could snap it without breaking a sweat, but he doesn't even try. He magically thinks there is no point because he tried so many times so long ago. The smarter we are, the easier we fall prey to magical thinking. One of my neighbors told me never to come to City Hall. She said it would be bad. I will only make you upset. I will then be on your blacklist and you would proceed to make my life uneasy. I know she meant well, but when I asked her to name at least one council member, she could not. She succumbed to magical thinking. She had never taken the time to meet any of you but somehow, she just knows what she said is true. I, on the other hand, would not want to put such words in your mouth. I would like to hear firsthand what you have to say. Why should I assume the worst? Were you not elected by our citizens? Are, you, are not most of our citizens good, reasonable people? Coming here to be part of the council is not your full-time job. You do it for some reason far beyond drawing a paycheck. You are here to make a difference. I must try to present you with enough information. The more you know, the better decisions you will make. When bad things happen, to turn and hide, to be a victim, that is not good character. I ask you tonight, if all my immediate neighbors are happy with my family and our choice of pets, why did animal control visit us five times? Why did animal control try to take our birds away? Why did the city harass us? If you cannot come up with an adequate explanation, then I beseech you 
to change our laws so this does not happen again. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other speakers this evening? Please come on up. Yeah, there you go. My name is Akiva Rosenzweig. I live on one Thorburn Road. In time of peace, chickens are a wonderful hobby. In time of war, a patriotic duty. If chickens were beautiful to look at, but not soft and cuddly, it would have been enough for us. If they were soft and cuddly, but did not clear our weeds, it would have been enough for us. If they cleared our weeds, but did not rid us of ticks and slugs, it would have been enough for us. If they rid us, if rid us of ticks and slugs, but did not energize our soil, it would have been enough for us. If they energized our soil, but could not be trained, it would have been enough for us. If they are easy to train, but do not produce eggs, it would have been enough for us. For every time we forget how truly incredible chickens can be, forgive us, pardon us, grant us atonement, for every time we forget the victory gardens of recent past, for chickens provided countless Americans and British citizens with nourishment and entertainment to live through World War II, forgive us, pardon us, grant us atonement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other speakers this evening? Please, come on up. We gotta get a key to some allergy medicine. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Rachel Rosensug. I live on one Thorburn Road. Is it the responsibility of a city to decide for its citizens what are pets and what are not? Must a city create laws that limit our personal freedoms? If a city must determine what is acceptable, where do we draw the line? At what point do we go too far and simply turn the city into one large homeowners association? Of course there is a d purpose for a HOA. An HOA is created when a small group of people decide that their immediate community should have specific rules about what is proper. This makes sense. If you want to control colors of paint and types of trees, you can create a uniform look amongst all neighbors. You can ask the HOA to enforce violations anonymously. If you move into a HOA, you must adhere to its rules. A city, by definition, is a large group of people living together. It's a melting pot. A strong city embraces diverse cultures and lifestyles. If people live in communities that are not part of an itch away, they should expect to see freedom of expression. In our Wesley community, our next door neighbor plants pumpkins in his front lawn. Up the street, a family built a jungle gym in their front lawn that everyone enjoys. We put our pet chickens in the front lawn and share them with their neighbors. It is a friendly place where people stop and chat with each other. If you live in a place without an HOA, you must learn to respect your neighbors. HOA or no HOA, both are good. It's up to you. What do you want? What do you believe? And where do you want to live? In 2010, when the McClure's asked the city to ban chickens, they did so because they did not live in an HOA community. I find it remarkable that it was easier for the McClure's to get the whole city to consider banning chickens than it was to convince their non-HOA community of Pheasant Run. Yet actually brought it to a public hearing, the question of removing the right to raise chickens from 60,000 citizens. At the city level, doesn't it make sense to only make laws that benefit public safety and transportation? Why make laws that decide what is prim and proper? Please leave, leave that for an HOA to decide. Do not impose any person's narrow view of the world across the entire city. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Do we have any other speakers this evening? Not seeing any. Then we will go to from the mayor and council. And tonight we are going to start with Council Member Henry Marafa. 
Well, welcome everybody. Um, it's been a, a <clears throat> couple busy weeks, but uh, Denim and Diamonds is a big fundraiser for the Wells Robertson House, which is a house for the uh, uh, people who are trying to recover from alcohol and uh, drugs. It's a very nice uh, event. It's a dinner dance. It's a, a silent auction. It's April the 24th. We would like to have everybody attend. Uh, it's at the Gaithersburg Hilton. So uh, please uh, consider it. Invite your friends. Um, I had the opportunity to read as a guest reader, like a lot of us up here, with Rachel Carson Elementary School last week. And I read a great book about how I became a pirate. So <laughs> they seemed to believe it. So I, you know, we had a we had a good affair. A good affair. Um, the employee appreciation lunch that most of us attended was really well done, and we want to congratulate all the uh, employees uh, with the um, honors that they received that day. And on a new note, I was at the uh, Senior Center today. We had our um, meeting, and the grand opening for all the new construction will be June the 11th. Uh, you'll look, have to stay tuned for the time, but I think it's going to start around noon time. There'll be a lot of activities that day, so plan on uh, put it on your calendar June the 11th for the new activities at uh, the Senior Center. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Henry Ryan. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It is nice to see a good crowd here this evening, as the mayor said earlier, and I do hope some of you, many of you, all of you will come back again um, to participate uh, in your city government process in whatever way uh, you feel is comfortable and appropriate um, for you and your interests. Uh, I do want to wish everyone who's celebrating a holiday or has celebrated a holiday or is about to celebrate a holiday. <laughs> that comes uh, ha everybody. Happy Passover, <laughs> happy Easter, uh, happy good spring weather. I hope uh, many of you had an opportunity to enjoy the good That's weather today, good. finally. Um, and I wanted to echo the comments that Henry made about the uh, employee appreciation lunch. You know, the heart and soul of the city is our incredible employees <coughs> who work so hard day in and day out to provide outstanding services and outstanding amenities for us and, uh, and to keep us safe. So thanks to them. Um, and I did also want to mention another event that occurred over the last couple of weeks since our last formal meeting, uh, the Young Artist Award concert uh, that we uh, host every year at the Arts Barn. Um, I like to joke every year coming out of that event that nothing will make you feel more inadequate than watching an eighth grader crush a, uh, a, a solo performance of classical music on a violin. Unless uh, you're their parent. Hmm? Unless you're their Unless parent. Unless you're their parent, right. <laughs> That's right. That's a, or, their, or their instructor. Yep. Uh, but no, it's a great, it's, it, joking aside, it's a great opportunity to feel tremendous pride for the city and, and the, the, the students and performers uh, who participate in that program. Mm -hmm. And I would encourage folks to uh, come next year and check it out if you, if you haven't ever checked it out before because it really is quite amazing. And it's great for the city to have the opportunity mm -hmm. to recognize the achievements um, of those young musicians. I did also want to recognize uh, the folks from the city's Multicultural Affairs Committee who are here tonight, um, and uh, I serve as a council liaison uh, to that Citizen Advisory Committee, and I just want to say again, uh, as, as many of us already know, they work so hard to plan wonderful cultural events throughout the city throughout the year, and um, so thanks for being here and for participating in uh, the presentation of the Arab American Heritage Month uh, Proclamation also want to take a, a, a personal moment to uh, say that it was very nice to see um, the rabbi and the president of my own congregation, Shari Torah, uh, here today uh, to accept the uh, uh, Days of Remembrance proclamation. And as I mention every year from the dais, um, uh, a good chunk of my extended family perished in the Holocaust. So uh, it, it's always a, an opportunity to sit and reflect and think about the importance of recognizing and teaching um, uh, those events uh, to our own children and future generations. Uh, finally, I have a formal announcement about a whole slew of events that are coming up in April and also in a, a little bit into uh, early May. So uh, hopefully you'll pay attention. You'll find uh, a number of events that you'll want to participate in. Uh, in Gaithersburg Magazine was recently mailed to all homes in the city and copies are available at city facilities and online. In the magazine, you can look for articles about changes to our stormwater program fee, uh, the history of Logtown, uh, how the city uses its GIS system, and uh, other interesting 
information about the city. April is Green Month in Gaithersburg. There's a community cleanup day on April 11th, environmental awards <laughs> on April 20th, and a free screening of the film Symphony of the Soil on April 29th. Uh, the Pulitzer Prize winning rock musical Next to Normal is on stage at the Arts Barn through April 26th. You can get great tips from a master gardener about mowing, irrigation, and fertilizing your lawn at the Community Museum's Tuesday Topics session on April 14th. The singer-songwriter workshop and concert series concludes this season with Peter Mulvey at the Arts Barn on April 16th. Band track model trains will be on display during train day at the Community Museum on April 19th. City residents can access a free rabies clinic for cats and dogs on April 19th at the Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center. <coughs> Montgomery Playhouse presents a staged reading of The Cave Dwellers on April 19th at the Arts Barn. And the annual State of the City Address takes place April 23rd at Asbury Methodist Village. This year's program includes the presentation of annual awards for Distinguished Citizen to Jim Savitz, Outstanding Organization to the Muddy Branch Alliance, and Distinguished Friend of Gaithersburg uh, to Gaithersburg Elementary School Principal Stephanie Brandt. Information for first-time homeowners will be available at a home buyer's workshop on Saturday, April 25th at the Activity Center at Borer Park. The City and the Montgomery County Humane Society are jointly hosting the Paws in the Park Dog Walk and Festival on April 26th at Borer Park at Summit Hall Farm. The Broadway sing-along at Ketlin's Mansion that was canceled in early March due to weather, early March due to weather, uh, has been rescheduled for Sunday, April 26th. The annual Spring Swing Golf Tournament takes place at Redgate Golf Course on May 1st. Open Mic at the Mansion invites all forms of unplugged music, poetry, and recitals on May 1st at the Kentlands Mansion. David London returns to the Arts Barn with a night of magic and mayhem on May 1st. The annual Kentlands Day Community Celebration happens on May 2nd. Artists are back at the Main Street Farmers Market in Kentlands on Saturdays starting on May 2nd. And the Thursday afternoon Folks Corner Farmers Market in Old Town opens on May 7th. The Gaithersburg Miniature Golf Course will be open weekends starting May 2nd. And weekday group rentals are available for business outings and team building events. And finally, the annual Active Aging Expo featuring educational talks, demonstrations, massages, manicures, uh, screenings, and more takes place at the Activity Center on May 4th. So as you can see, we've really got an action-packed calendar over the course of the next month of tremendous educational events and cultural events, and I hope you'll take advantage of some of those. For more information, including hours, admission fees, and ticket purchases, you can visit our website, www.gaithersburgmd. Gov. And that's all I've got this evening. All right. Hope everyone was taking notes. Neil Harris. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that I celebrated the uh, finally uh, final arrival of spring by finally putting away my snowblower this past weekend. <laughs> Up until that point, it was touch and go. Um, and uh, I'd like to just say that um, over the past couple of weeks, uh, I had a chance to meet with the folks from an organization called Family Services, Inc., which is a very large nonprofit. Uh, that attended our landlord's appreciation breakfast a few weeks ago. Uh, their offices are a sprawling campus not far from City Hall, and they provide services to all sorts of uh, people in need in the community. And I, I'd just like to say I appreciated the chance to get to see their facility and understand the nature of their good work. It's really quite an impressive organization. Um, also had a chance to attend uh, an event at uh, MedImmune. They held a two-day Maryland biotech conference uh, where they brought in the secretaries of business and economic development from both Maryland and Virginia, uh, the, the CEO of AstraZeneca, the parent company of MedImmune, flew in from London. It was a huge event over, over two days, really very impressive. Uh, and the, the entire gathering was all about uh, how to strengthen this region as a biotech corridor. So uh, very hopeful that more and more companies like MedImmune will uh, make Montgomery County and hopefully Gaithersburg their home. 
Um, I have some announcements. Um, I was hoping for uh, for uh, the Sex Pistols pretty vacant as my uh, theme music for the vacancy announcements, but uh, I don't think that's allowed here. Um, so let me just... <laughs> Staff, can you work on that, please? Yeah, we'll, really. we'll work on that for next time. Yeah. Um, let me move on to the uh, vacancy announcements. The Animal Control Board has uh, openings for an alternate public at-large business community member, one representative of the Montgomery County Veter Veterinary Medical Association, uh, or shall have training and or experience in the proper training or care of animals, and one alternate representative of the Montgomery County Veterinary Medical Association, or shall have training and or experience in the proper care of training of animals, open until filled. We have an opening for a full member of the Board of Supervisors of Elections. It's open until April 27th. We have an opening on the Commission on Landlord Tenant Affairs, a full representative, uh, full tenant representative, and an alternate tenant. Those are open until filled. And there's another list of committees where we have openings without specific requirements or numbers. The Community Advisory Committee, the Economic and Business Development Committee, the Educational Enrichment Committee, the Multicultural Affairs Committee, Police Advisory Committee, Senior Advisory Committee, and the Transportation Committee. If you're interested in serving on any or all of the above, well, any of the above anyway, all would be a bit much. <laughs> um, please send a letter of interest and resume to Mayor and City Council, 31 South Summit Avenue, Gaithersburg, MD, 20877, or via email to cityhall at gaithersburgmd.gov. For more information and official announcements, please visit the city's website at www.gaithersburgmd.gov or contact the city manager's office at 301-258-6310. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy Drisgula. Okay. Um, well, while some of you are, were reading books, um, I was in Annapolis uh, testifying on the stormwater bill um, that had passed the Senate and was being heard by the House um, Transportation Environment Committee. Uh, the city of Gaithersburg's main um, focus in testifying was that the draft law says that the state should pay county stormwater fees, but we would also like it to say that the state and county should pay municipal stormwater fees. Basically, um, the fee should be paid to whatever government entity is handling the stormwater uh, <coughs> system and maintenance for a particular property. Um, as was mentioned, I was, you know, always amazed as always at the Young Artist Concert. Um, there's, you know, even if it's not an instrument you like or something like that, it's the music that comes out and flows is just, just wonderful. Um, in this, the, the same way, um, was happy to attend the employee appreciation lunch and, and honor our employees of the, the year and the team of the year. Um, Judd and I had the opportunity to uh, go to Gaithersburg High School last week, I think it was, um, and meet with their robotics team. Um, also, there were people from the Rotary Club and some other organizations who might be um, partnering with them in some way in the future there. And we got to, they were flying drones a little bit. It was really, really uh, windy, so they couldn't fly too high, which is probably good for other reasons. But um, <laughs> got to see some, some of what they do. Um, and this is certainly um, a program that's been around for quite a while. And I, I've known um, children that were, um, you know, my daughter's friends who were in it. Um, and certainly something uh, we want to see children have an opportunity to do in our community, both as a, a learning experience and, and a, a way to sort of uh, stretch their experience be beyond normal academics. Um, and lastly, I'll just mention that uh, I know there was a press release, but I think, and I know we were going to announce the Citizen Awards ahead of time, but perhaps something other than just making the first public announcement of it in our meeting be part of an events calendar would, it would be more appropriate. Um, I think the awards really are a big deal, and, and the people who receive them should get full honor. That's all I have. Okay, thanks, Kathy. Mike. Okay, uh, let me begin with a uh, official announcement here. This is a, about a closed executive session that we held at our last uh, meeting. A closed meeting was held at City Hall by the Mayor and City Council on Monday, March 16, 2015, at approximately 11:20 p.m. Boy, we got to not have those meetings so late. <laughs> uh, pursuant to a motion adopted unanimously, the meeting was proposed to be closed pursuant to the general provisions article of the Annotated Code of the State of Maryland, Section 3-305B1I, 
the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom it has jurisdiction, and 3-305B8, to consult with staff, consultants, or other individuals about pending or potential litigation. The topics discussed were the consideration of a recommendation of the Personal Re Personnel Review Board and the proceedings <coughs> in the Exelon Pepco merger before the Public Service Commission. Present at the meeting were Mayor Ashman, Council Members Driscoula, Harris, Marafa, Sesma, and Spiegel. Spiegel left at 11.35 p.m. City Manager Tomasello, Deputy City Manager Enslinger, City Attorney Board, and Assistant City Attorney Johnson. Upon a conclusion of the discussion, the closed meeting was adjourned at approximately 11.45 p.m. Uh, just a few announcements. I, I also want to uh, uh, acknowledge uh, and uh, wish everyone uh, a happy easy Easter and a happy Passover if you uh, celebrate and observe those those holidays, but I think uh, what we had over the weekend was a great opportunity of uh, welcoming spring with uh, an opportunity to be with our families, whether you celebrate at a Seder or an Easter dinner uh, and the events associated with that. So it was a, it was a great weekend to, to celebrate spring in Gaithersburg. I think the next best thing is today was opening day for baseball. Uh, you know, you just really have to say opening day. You don't have to mention baseball, but because I think all Americans understand that. But if you want to know what happened on opening day, well, Baltimore won. They beat Tampa Bay 6-2, and the Nationals lost uh, to the Mets 3-1. Uh, to one. But the new pitcher, Scherzer, did a great job. So anyway, uh, that's about it. Oh, the last thing I want to mention is uh, perhaps you've seen people wearing bright blue or royal blue this month, uh, or uh, blue lights on houses, uh, or, uh, or on other objects uh, in the evening, and uh, that is to signify that uh, April is Autism Awareness Month, and the purpose of Autism <coughs> Awareness Month is to make people more aware of uh, autism uh, and all that goes with it, but also to sensitize us, uh, to, uh, inform us about the uh, the potential causes and uh, prevention and also uh, how uh, individuals with autism or individuals <coughs> who have who are on the autism spectrum uh, can uh, add to our lives and uh, and contribute to our communities but also bring great value to our communities and our families so uh, be aware of that take the opportunity to learn about autism uh, <coughs> this month it'll, it'll be easy but you can also you don't have to wait till April is over or uh, ends to you can keep doing that all year round so uh, that's about it thank, thank you. you Mike thanks to the council members uh, for your comments uh, I uh, not gonna repeat all the events but I, I will uh, mention that I, I was like Henry I, I read over at uh, Rachel Carson and they asked me what I wanted to read to the second grade class and I, I told the librarian pick me a couple of Gaithersburg Book Festival author books <laughs> so they they did um, one, the first one was uh, Dragons Love Tacos uh, by Adam Rubin, which is <laughs> such a funny book. Really, really cool. And, this, and the second one um, I hadn't heard of before. It's called Library Lion by this lady named Michelle Knudsen. Um, and it was beautiful. I, I, I almost, I, I well up just thinking about this book. It was, it was so great. Um, so uh, that obviously... I'm segueing into my, my uh, weekly talk about the book festival. Um, first off, I hope that you all haven't grocery shop for the week yet and you will wait until Wednesday and go to Whole Foods because Whole Foods is donating 5% of their sales all that day on Wednesday to the Gaithersburg Book Festival. It's a, it's a big help, uh, you know, it's a, book festival is an expensive event and, and we, we, we value and need very much the contributions of our sponsors so it's a big help that uh, help that Whole Foods would do this so please uh, anytime on Wednesday just shop at Whole Foods and in the evening there will be a wine tasting uh, event as as part of it but whether you whether you partake in that or not you know any shopping there will help uh, the book festival um, and I will also note that we are almost, I, I think there's only two authors who haven't submitted their stuff for the website. So virtually all of the authors who will be with us on May 16th 
here on the grounds of City Hall or on the website, GaithersburgBookFestival.org. And I hope you'll uh, take a few moments to uh, look over some of the great talent and great writers who are, who are going to be here to, to talk about their work. Um, take a look at the workshops. I know that we have our workshop schedule both for adults and for children uh, live on the website. Um, we have our Children's Village page so you can get a, a sense of the activities and, and performances and readings and all that that will be there. It's going to be a fantastic day, May 16th. Please join us um, uh, and please take a look at the website and share with friends, family, everybody. Um, and that's all I'm, I'm going to, although I could go on for much longer, trust me. Um, next week, uh, Mayor and City Council will have, we will have a work session discussing potential amendments to the city's adequate public facilities ordinance that should be uh, quite an in, uh, in-depth conversation, so we, we hope that you'll join us for that. And then the following week, April 20th, will be a regular meeting of the City Council, um, and we will have our, among other things, we'll have our budget public hearing for the FY16 budget that, that evening, so plan to be here for that. Next, we have from the City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Perfect segue uh, on the budget. It's always a big deal when we can get it introduced, which we did last Monday. Um, we're going to um, try and get the actual budget available to the public on the website tomorrow. Um, generally, the SIRE package is Thursday to the public, and the SIRE package will still be Thursday to the public. There'll just be a link to the budget, which has been split into five um, kind of more manageable files. Thank you. That um, right. just follows through the book. So we'll have a few extra steps when we go through it to switch files when we go through it at the public, uh, at the work session. Um, and then um, in the I don't know, the next few months you might see some activity um, on the top of the garage. Uh, Cricket Cellular has one of the two towers, and Cricket, uh, subsequent to his acquisition by AT&T, um, is decommissioning a lot of towers because they use different types of bandwidth, um, CDMA versus I think 4G for AT&T. Um, so uh, they've notified us informally. We expect to get formal notification shortly, and we'll direct them, per the terms of the lease, to remove that facility uh, from the roof of the garage. Great. Does, does that affect our um, uh, lease revenue? It does. Yeah. It does. We'll, we'll take, um, I think it's about $18,000 a year to rent the space up there. Great. Um, next on our agenda, uh, we are inviting Tom Lonergan up to the podium. He has beaten us to the punch. He is there. He is ready for us. Take it away. I apologize for coming before the invitation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. No apology necessary. <laughs> um, I think we're skipping past the typical um, week, biweekly briefing to the uh, resolution. A um, little out of sorts, but um, we have a resolution tonight that we're seeking um, the authorization for the city manager to negotiate and execute an economic development incentive agreement with uh, what's called ARE 708 Quince Orchard, which is uh, Alexandria Real Estate. Um, the, the short story with this is that we are attempting to um, partner in a public-private partnership with Alexandria uh, Biohealth Innovation and Montgomery County on uh, a small incubator at 708 Quince Orchard Road. Now typically at this point we would just provide you with some background information proceed to the resolution, but given the unique nature of this, uh, we did pre uh, prepare a short PowerPoint presentation that provides some background on this arrangement. Uh, so if you'll indulge me, um, build as Alexandria Launch Labs. Um, this is a consortium project with Alexandria, uh, the city of Gaithersburg, along with our partners at Biohealth Innovation and Montgomery County Government. A uh, little bit of background, uh, the pursuit of an incubator has been listed as an action item for economic development for at least the past year. Uh, as you know, the Shady Grove Innovation Center, also known as the Shady Grove Incubator, did close in 2014, which left the city of Gaithersburg uh, without a business incubator that can address the uh, unique needs of emerging biotech companies. Uh, while generic office type incubators have largely been addressed by the private sector as these shared office space suites have opened in and around the city, uh, growing demand for small lab space for early biotech companies has been insufficiently met. Uh, as I mentioned, Shady Grove Incubator closed and this launch lab opportunity did provide the city with a unique opportunity to further capture this very niche market. Uh, there are significant construction costs, um, barriers to entry that are typically uh, insurmountable for small startups, um, both for build-out costs as well as for uh, the support services they need to, to get their company and their thought off the ground. Um, 
those costs really make these public-private partnerships critical for success. And frankly, while talking about the Shady Grove Incubator, I think it's important to mention again that uh, almost 40 companies were displaced by the closure of that incubator. Um, some went out of business, but uh, many of them landed in privately held space in and around the region. Within Gaithersburg, about eight of them landed, uh, many of them within Alexandria properties. And frankly, if we had had more of these small office and lab spaces available, we probably would have gotten more. Uh, Alexandria Launch Labs in Maryland is a public-private partnership designed to fill this niche um, for early life science companies, providing small modules of lab office space, uh, shared amenities and services, which is critical, as well as an array of programs. Uh, very broadly, the importance of incubators certainly is finance, uh, helping them with uh, startup costs on infrastructure and operating. Uh, management, incubators help to tap into networks of experienced entrepreneurs. Uh, synergies. These companies like to work in close proximity with each other and, and almost work together. And of course, in the end, you hope that it does benefit the local economy by having these uh, long-lasting jobs created for host communities. This is a picture of the building where it will be on Queen's Orchard Road uh, across from NIST. Uh, some of the features, uh, five lab office modules, each about 1,200 sweet, uh, square feet. Uh, lab space includes uh, the sink, fume hood, um, the typical stuff you would find in a small lab. Uh, the office space does have a furnished office, workstations, uh, IT closet, glass wash, things that, things that these small startups will require. And uh, BHI, Biohealth Innovation, will be providing uh, startup entrepreneur in residence programs to guide these early stage companies and provide resources to help with their growth. There's a lot of in, in information about here, but uh, BHI really is uh, the best in the region to help these startups. Um, they've got, um, you know, their mission is to provide commercial assistance to scientists and founders in early stages of forming new ventures. Uh, they realize this mission through partnerships with leading institutions in industry, government, uh, and academia. And some of their partners here in the city include Metamune Kaijin uh, and Emergent Biosolutions. And this finally is a picture of the floor plan for the approximately 6,000 plus square feet that will be uh, hosting these five office lab spaces. I guess we can keep that up here. So the request from uh, Alexandria Real Estate is not to exceed $100,000 from the city's Economic Development Opportunities Fund. Additional funds uh, have been requested and I believe approved from the county and state to support this investment. Um, staff is seeking approval to complete negotiations and execute the documents needed to move forward. Um, with me tonight actually is Larry Diamond from Alexandria Real Estate if anybody has any additional questions about this, about this partnership. Thank you. I guess my question is, and it, it, all, it sounds good and has been part of our um, strategic plan, or I don't know whether it was strategic, but it was, it was uh, it was an expressed goal of the city to fill the void of the uh, the county's incubator closing uh, when, if there was an opportunity to do so. So I'm excited about that. Um, what specifically is our potential commitment of $100,000 going for uh, in this I, case? I could answer that or I could call Larry up if you'd like to talk about um, the type of investment that Alexandria is putting into this space, which is significant. Right. Hi, I'm Larry Diamond, uh, Senior Vice President of Alexandria Real Estate. Um, I've opened up the Alexandria office um, uh, close to two decades ago on Clopper Road, and we have about two million square feet of office uh, uh, life science space up and down the I-270 corridor, with half of it being in Gaithersburg. Uh, this particular incubator will cost close to $800,000 plus to construct. Uh, it's quite expensive to build laboratory space. Uh, we've already filed for permit with city of Gaithersburg. We actually picked it up yesterday. Um, and uh, uh, so it's a pretty significant investment on our part. We're just looking for relatively minor investment from both city of Gaithersburg and um, Montgomery County to be uh, consortium partners with us. Um, and we think this is going to result in some pretty significant job growth uh, in the city. Thank you. Any other questions? Comments? No, just very excited to, to have you coming in and opening the space and know it's been needed. Uh, clearly, I think the county's uh, made a big mistake in, in uh, how quickly they closed the, the innovation center uh, without a real solution. 
and it's too bad we didn't have the solution a year ago because some of those uh, tenants might have uh, been able to maintain their their business and their their projects had that space been available. But it's great to have you there, and it's it's great to ha I think that's a terrific uh, area of the city and neighborhood for this for this to happen. So let's expect to see a lot of synergy for this happening. Yeah, I want to congratulate you. Um, I have always been um, a real advocate of, of, you know, starting new businesses and getting them in the city. And, and when the county closed there, I, I didn't quite understand it. But thanks for coming and doing that. There's nothing better we can do for a city than to provide opportunities for new businesses to start, put people to work. And um, and this is just a step in the right direction. And I hope you find more places and, and uh, we'll be partners with you as long as we possibly can. <clears throat> so. Thank you. Anyone else? Ditto. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of incubators. I worked out of it, uh, a, a technology, software technology incubator in Howard County and had a great experience and have been kind of lobbying on the side of the county to get more involved in, uh, in moving forward on incubators rather than in the other direction. So I think this is great. Um, I just have a quick question. Does the city have an ongoing role in this? Is it a public-private partnership where we're part of some oversight organization? Is that how it works? Or we're just writing a check? What, what's our job here? No, we're hoping that you'll continue to be a partner, um, both from an advertising perspective um, and marketing. Uh, we know that uh, the city gets a number of inquiries for uh, life science companies coming into town. Now they'll have a place to, to put them. Um, so I'm hoping it's going to be an ongoing relationship. In terms of vetting the tenants going into the space, um, It'll be primarily between Alexandria and BHI because we have the technical competence to do so from an underwriting perspective. So what happens when you fill it up? Do you have more space that you'll be devoting to this sort of thing? Well, actually, we want to fill it up, but we're going to be different than the Rockville incubator or the Montgomery County incubator. Uh, we only want tenants in, in there for about 18 months. Mm -hmm. So after 18 months, we want these tenants. These are people with ideas out of their garage that are starting businesses and have some funding. We want them to you know, stay in there 12 to 18 months and then blossom into a, uh, a bigger company and constantly be churning the space. And if we find that we need to build another one in the same building, uh, we may be able to expand on this concept. All right, great. Well, we hope when they churn, <laughs> they move to space in Gaithersburg as well, perhaps uh, Alexandria properties. So. Absolutely. And we hope you all would attend <laughs> the uh, Ribbon cutting when the mm -hmm. facilities develop. Great. Uh, yeah, we Thank also you. had the accelerator on first year, so I don't know if that would suit any of them. But mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Would anyone like to make the resolution, to move the resolution? I'll move the resolution. I'll second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carries 5 0. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. Next, we are inviting to the podium Public Works Director Michael Johnson. Good evening, Mayor, uh, members of council. Good evening. Um, the resolution before you for consideration this evening um, is a resolution that authorizes the city to uh, enter into an additional one-year contract for roadway resurfacing. Um, the Public Works Department is in the process of changing its internal CIP process for dealing with uh, road the roads. and. Um, this company, Olney Masonry Corporation, has provided exemplary performance in um, past uh, roadway repaving work. So uh, we, it, it would allow us to pave the three roads which are scheduled to be done in FY16. For FY17, the new process would be in place and we would competitively bid and you know come before you with a request to make an award to whoever the appropriate low bidder is. The uh, dollar amount is about a little over $749,000 uh, with a contingency of about 15% because uh, to account for unknowns in the, uh, in this, that's inherent in this type of work. Any questions, comments? What is the pleasure of the council? I move approval. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carries 5-0. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we have from the city attorney. Any, anything? Uh, nothing this evening. Would any other staff present care to add anything? Okay. Then um, 
as met, was mentioned before, our, the next regular meeting of the Mayor and Council is April 20th. Um, next week we have our work session, same time, same place, 7.30 p.m., on the Adequate Public Facilities Ordinance. Please do, if you, if you can, shop at Whole Foods on Wednesday to support the Book Festival. Um, and until next time, let's do great things, Gaithersburg. We are adjourned. <laughs>